In this tutorial, we will use a cylinder, a helix, and a pipe to model a simple screw. To model a screw that is subdividable or can be smoothed, we will need our model to be made entirely of quads or four-sided shapes. We also need to make sure that we do not cause pinching on the edges of geometry by adding random edge loops through it later on. Probably you might notice when dealing with objects with curved surfaces or curved corners like this, if you add random edge loops, it will sort of create a nasty pinch in the reflections and the overall form of the shape. So this tutorial will help you avoid that. The best way to model a hollow shape is to count how many edges you need beforehand and then create a pipe with that number of edges. First, let's turn on interactive creation in our polygon primitives menu. So make sure that interactive creation is turned on. I do have some buttons on my shelf which were added after I had turned on interactive creation. I have tutorials on how to add buttons to your shelf as well as how to make materials look nice like this in your viewport as well. These tutorials are linked in the description below. So to count the number of edges that we'll need later on, I'll actually start off with a cube because I know that I need a sort of a four pronged hole in the middle of my geometry. So I'm gonna create a cube. I'm holding shift here to interactively create a perfect cube. This, I'm then gonna to go to face mode and double click around the edges of the cube to select all of the side edges, but not the top and the bottom. Once once these are selected, I'm going to go to Extrude from your Poly Modeling tab or from Edit Mesh Extrude. After you've hit the Extrude button, don't ex move any of the faces yet with the manipulator. If we were to do this, it would extrude them all joined together like this. If you want these to be extruded separately like fingers on a hand, you go to the Channel Box Layer Editor on the right hand side with vertical text. You look for something called Keep Faces Together and I'm going to turn that off. I just you can click and slide on or off. So I just click to my mouse and drag to my mouse to the left or to the right to slide it on or off. I'm going to turn keep faces together off. Now, when I extrude, they extrude like this. I'm just going to try and extrude these out to, until they are about the right sort of size for the middle of a screw. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to count some edges here. After that, we're going to go to edge mode. I'm going to click on one edge that's vertical, hold shift and double click next door to it. It will then, if I hit four on the keyboard, select all the vertical edges in that loop of faces. My next step is to bevel these vertical edges. I'll get to my bevel tool up here. Uh, if you can't see it on your shelf, it's under Edit Mesh Bevel. And you can obviously change the fraction down. We're actually not even going to use this geometry. We're just going to count how many edges it's got. But if we bring up our poly count at the top left hand corner, I've just hidden it just so I can have my screen like yours. To display your poly count, you go display, heads up display, and poly count. I've also added this to my shelf, but you can turn that on there. And if I select my vertical edges again, you can see you've got three columns in your poly count. You've got what's in your overall scene, but on the far right over, over here is what is currently selected. You can see there's no vertices selected, but there are 24 edges selected. So to create a screw with a cross shape in the middle like this with beveled edges um, we need 24. By the way these beveled edges are to help us keep this object looking sharp when we hit three later on so it will help us keep the corners quite sharp. I'm just going to move this uh, geometry out of the way with W and let's create a cylinder. I'm going to go to get a cylinder from my shelf or from the create polygon primitives menu sorry a pipe. I'm going to create polygon primitives pipe and I'm going to hold shift to interactively create a pipe like this and then go back to your select tool over here so the lines become a slightly lighter shade of green so that you can see your, your attributes. If you go to your attribute editor and go to the poly pipe tab over here, yours should be called poly pipe one or something. And the subdivisions axis here, this is what we need to increase to 24 to match the number of edges needed for the cross shape in the middle. Once you've done that, we can then delete the faces along the sides, along the bottom. So I've just gone into face mode there, lower down my camera, and then I can hit delete. If you accidentally leave ones at the bottom, you just make sure you delete those as well, but leave the ones on the top. Now spacebar to your top view. I'm in the wireframe mode with four on the keyboard. You can hit five to come out of wireframe mode. I need to rotate this pipe ever so slightly so that the top and bottom of the screw are sort of and the sides of the screw are at all at 90 degrees. It's slightly lopsided at the moment. To rotate this, I'm going to hit E and I'm going to rotate it by 7.5 degrees. So on the rotate Y, if you want in your channel box, you could do 7.5. This should mean the top and bottom faces should be like this then. 
as opposed to at a weird angle. Once you've done this, I like to freeze transformations because if you were to um, move this tool, sometimes it would be aligned with the object, aligned with the world, but if you were to move the shape and it's aligned with the object, you'll see that your move tool is at a slightly weird angle. So if you just go to modify and freeze transformations, it will then just accept that this is now zero, which will help us uh, later on. We can now go to vertex mode and we can start to bring in the vertices for the bevels on the sides. So I'm gonna drag select the top and the bottom. I could turn on symmetry, but it'll be a bit of a pain. So I'm just gonna turn, um, I'm gonna select these two and these two. So I'm gonna leave the top to flat, but if you hit R for resize after selecting these vertices, you'll see that you bring these in a bit like that. I'm gonna do the same for the, on the horizontal ones here and bring these in like that. And then finally, these two that are left in the middle, I'm gonna do R for resize, and I'm gonna bring them in like this. Now, from the top view, everything will look fine, but if I go and spacebar to my 3D view, it might look ever so slightly, okay, mine's actually fine, but if, if for you, anything's gone a bit weird and has sunken down to the bottom like this, then you can just go to face mode, drag select all your faces. You can just drag select them all, do R for resize, and drag them all together to flatten everything out. So that was the simplest way of creating a cross in the middle of a pipe that you can really get. Um, you can see that I haven't been completely accurate with some of these bevels, so I can go over to here and I could like resize uh, some of these in uh, like that. Or if you're wanting to make the entire whole cross in the middle larger, go to edge mode, double click on the edge in the middle and then you can resize it up with the yellow square like this and you can increase the size of it etc. We're now ready to turn this into a 3D object. I'm going to space part to my 3D view and I'm going to go to edge mode and double click on the outside circle first and then do extrude or you can hit W for move actually and uh, and just drag those down. So after you've hit extrude, hit W for move and drag down, or alternatively move whilst holding shift, and choose the thickness for the size of your screw. I'm gonna do a sort of quite a short stubby screw that would go into the bottom of a mobile phone or something, so I'm gonna go for this. Next, let's do the inside, and I'm gonna, again, I can hold shift if I want, and while holding shift, extrude these down to there. We now need to bridge the bottom of this uh, plus sign together. The easiest way to do that is to do this. Again, I could turn on symmetry, but it's probably more effort than it's worth. So I'm gonna select from this diagonal edge, double click up to this diagonal edge. So these three edges are selected and go around this side as well, but skipping the one at the top. I can then go to edit mesh bridge. I'm gonna add this to my shelf and I'm gonna hit bridge. And I'm gonna do the same on the bottom. So if an even faster way would be to click here, shift, double click over here, then still while holding shift, deselect the one at the top. If the one at the top is deselected or blue, you can hit bridge. Same over here now. So I'm going to go from here to here and hit bridge. Oh, I forgot to deselect the one at the top. And then I can hit bridge. And then over here as well, I can go from... If I go from here to here, it will select the shortest route, which I don't really want it to do. So what I could do is just double click on the remaining edges and then hold shift and say, no, not you. And no, not you. And then bridge those together as well. This is now a neatly bridged base to the cross. Now underneath the top of our screw, we need to join this all up as well. Now I'm gonna extrude these inwards first. So I hit my extrude tool at the top. I'm not gonna do the whole shift trick now. So hit extrude at the top on your, from your shelf. Find the blue arrow. The blue arrow is always the perpendicular angle to where you wanna go, so that's perfect. I'm gonna drag the blue arrow quite far in uh, like this so that the remaining faces are gonna be sort of hidden by the pipe below. I could bridge these up. I'm actually going to leave these off to save my poly count. But if you did, if you're ever in the case, you need to bridge or fill a gap at the top of a circle. You've got two options. You could double click and then hold shift and select two opposing edges like this one and this one so that they are not selected and then simply hit bridge. If you hit three on the keyboard, you can see the effect that, that has if I just select these faces quick. I hit three on the keyboard. You can see it does like that kind of weird shape. The other way of bridging this gap would be to select the edges and go to mesh fill hole. And obviously you need to uh, would triangulate this because otherwise it goes like that. So we can do mesh triangulate and it kind of does that. There's not really a perfect way to bridge the middle of a circle. So I prefer to 
Um, either leave it empty or bridge it. So I'm just gonna delete that because it's gonna be hidden by the pipe later on. If you are ever concerned by seeing edges like this where they're very clearly sharp edges, you can go to edge mode, drag select through the middle of them or shift or double click and double click and select a loop of edges and then go to mesh display, soften edge, They'll all become nice and smooth like that. So you can't see how many edges the original cylinder had. So now we get to the stage where we need to bevel this. So I'm going to um, quickly put some nice shaders and stuff onto this. So to assign materials to this, we can do right click, assign new material. We're gonna assign an Arnold shader, a standard surface. Again, this step is optional. It's just gonna help us see what the highlights look like. After you've assigned your AI standard surface, go to the attributes editor and you may need to delete history at this point so you can go edit it delete all by type history and then you should see a tab called ai standard surface one you can go into there go to presets go to chrome and go to replace on that one so there might have been off screen there but you go to uh, presets chrome and then there is a replace option um coming out sorry about that and then uh we need to turn on our lights but there are no lights yet so we can quickly go to arnold light skydome light and on the right hand side in the attribute editor in AI Skydome Light Shape 1, we can quickly go to the color checkerboard and choose an HDRI file with through the folder here. So I do have a tutorial that goes through this a bit slower, but now you've got an environment around the edge. I want to hide this environment, so I'll scroll down a little bit and I'll go to where it says viewport and turn sky radius to zero. So I can't see it anymore, but I can still see the reflections that it casts on our geometry. And at the moment, you can see the sides of this look really sharp. So I'll go and bevel them. So you go to edge mode, and I'm gonna go around the edges at the top over here, and also on the underside. Oops, so around there, around there, around the top of the cross, and also at the bottom of the cross. Now the bottom of the cross, you may have to go in and double click furiously around the edge to select an entire loop of edges. I'll make sure they have all gone orange and that there are no blue edges along the floor or the bottom of that uh, cross in the middle. Um, we could have just probably done a fast way of selecting that anyway, but that's fine. And then after you select those edges carefully, you can go to bevel and you should see your uh, poly bevel one box appear. If you don't, just maybe try it, instead of trying it from your shelf, try it from edit mesh bevel. There's a known error where if you add this to your shelf, it doesn't always work, um, but add it like that and then um, increase or decrease the fraction down until it's quite sharp like mine is there. And I'm gonna leave the segments at one for now. Now to test this, if we hit three on the keyboard, you can sort of see that the edges are quite sharp. If I just undo my bevel command, you'll see that without a bevel, it looks really blobby like this. But the moment you do add that bevel, it looks a lot sharper. And uh, you can see the lovely highlights on the corners. So now we're gonna move on to the main cylinder of this object. So I'm gonna space bar for this to the top view, that space bar to your top view. I'm gonna hit four on the keyboard so that I can see through my geometry. And I'm gonna move my uh, shape right to the middle of the grid. So I'm going to zoom in fairly far and just move this as middle as far to the middle as the grid as I can. I'm then going to create a pipe. So that's create polygon primitives and pipe. And I'm going to do mine from the shelf. And it will say drag out the base and the grid. So we'll do that. So make sure. Oh, I've just done it like that. I'm going to space bar to my 3D view. I think I just double clicked and created that. So double click and just creates a standard pipe shape. And I want to set the sensor of this pipe as well to the middle. I can see here it's slightly off. I could move it by eye, or I could actually go to my channel box up here and do translate X, Y, and Z all to zero. So it's exactly in the middle. And then I do R for resize and drag down the diameter of this pipe to match what I have in mind for the rest of it. So I'm gonna drag out the height as well. That's R free size, drag out the height. If you've got the height right, but it's too thick or narrow, you can use the resize mode. Use a green plane here to change the thickness of this. I'll drag this down to about that big for now. And let's say that will do. The next step will be to add a helix. I'm just gonna assign my shiny material to that one and move the whole thing up. So to add the thread to the screw, we're going to create a helix. So we're going to space bar to our top view and do create polygon primitives helix. And 
drag out from the middle. We can make sure it's exactly the middle later on. Um, as you drag this out, it sort of gets smaller before it gets bigger. So just try and drag it out until you can see it getting bigger again, like this. Um, we can change the size of it later on and stuff. So just drag out the width. And now it says drag up the height. So we need to space bar to a 3D view and roughly set the height. Um, we're going to change this now anyway. So you can also drag to edit the number of coils um, as well. Um, but again, we can customize this in the attribute editor. And, oh, we can drag the, select, the, select, the section radius as well like this. So you could try and aim for something roughly sort of like that. I think if you hold control on the keyboard, um, it lets you have more control over the, uh, the section radius and stuff like this. So I can do that. But now I've done that, I obviously want to resize this down quite a lot. So let's let go and move this up so that the top of the helix is going into the top of the screw. I'm going to go to the attribute editor now on the right hand side with the vertical text and go to polyhelix one tab. I'm going to change the radius down again. I'm you, you holding control doesn't seem to work on these sliders, which is really quite irritating. So I'm going to try the width. That's not working either. So I'm just drag. I'm going to have to type in my own numbers. I'm going to try 0.2, 0.5, 1, 0 0.7. And as you can see, 0 0.7 for me works fine. You're kind of aiming for the thread to wrap around the pipe like this. So you might need to keep typing in your the, the width value yourself until you get something that works. So for me, point, let's try 0 0.65. 0 0.65 is, is even better because it hides a sort of middle part or the inside part there. So the, the top, or the, like the poles as it were of this uh, thread are hidden within the cylinder. This is good. So we can now, uh, I'm just gonna assign my material to that, sign this material, chrome material to that one. And I do wanna have more threads on it. So I'm gonna go to my number of coils and just increase the number of coils like this. And now I wanna sort of decrease the radius. Now I've done that. Not point not four seems to be good on that one. After I've done that, I want to go to resize these in slightly and now go to edge mode. So if I go to edge mode and double click on the outermost edge here, I can then do R for resize. Now, if I resize these with this, the yellow cube in the middle, they'll all resize at sort of weird angles like this, which isn't what we want. But if I resize it with the green plane, this green square here, and it resizes them at the current height that they're at, which means you don't distort the overall shape of the geometry. So you can make these look quite sharp, which is great for a thread of a screw. So that was use the green plane there on the outermost edge to increase the thread sort of sharpness. So if this was the bottom of the, if the bottom of this screw was supposed to be flat, then I would just extend it down to about here and say that we're done. Although some screws seem to have a, a sharp bottom as well. So I'm going to just drag this down here. I need to add an edge loop to create the sharpness on this geometry. So I'm going to drag an edge loop roughly in there. Then I'll go to vertex mode and drag these vertices at the bottom. When, going, when dragging vertices, I often hit four to drag select them down there. And then I'm going to hit five, six, seven on the keyboard to see all my lights again. I'm going to resize these in like this. I will leave a bit of a sharp, sorry, a bit of a blunt area at the bottom like that. Now I need to change the, the the width of the helix at the bottom to match this. The trick to do this is to use soft select. So I'm going to go to face mode. I'm going to select this face here and I'm going to just check my soft select settings. If you double click on your select tool, you can go to soft selection and I'm going to turn on soft select. By default, the fall off mode is set to volume. I'm going to set the fall off mode to surface, which only affects the attached faces. So you can increase or decrease this using right, with B on the keyboard. So if I just close out of this a minute, and if you tap B on the keyboard, you come out of soft select mode. If you tap B, you go back into soft select mode, which saves you time going all the way through this menu here. And if you hold the letter B on the keyboard and zoom out really far, you and hold letter B and drag your mouse left or right, you should see a blue circle appear. You might need to zoom out quite far to see this. If everything's yellow, you need to zoom out further and hold B and drag your left mouse button to see what's going on. So if I zoom in now and drag my mouse to the left while holding B, you can see the amount of fall off decreasing on my screw. So I'm going to go down to about here. So I want the screw to be yellow hot at the bottom and fall off 
that uh, sort of black up here where I don't really want it to resize much. So the yellow area will be affected the most, the black area will be affected the least. If you now do R for resize, you can see that your pivot isn't actually in the middle of your object. If you resize this, it would sort of all resize down to this area, which isn't good. So if we hit D on the keyboard, D for dog or D for delta and spacebar to your top view and you can then move the pivot. So I'm not moving the geometry, I'm moving the pivot because I hit D, which is the move pivot shortcut button. I'm moving this pivot to match the exact middle of the geometry. If I was to hold X on the keyboard, that would snap that to the middle of the grid of the scene. Now that that's in the middle, I can hit D again to snap out of there. And then as I resize these in, I need to again check that I'm using the plane, not the square in the middle that I was just doing, use the green plane. So they stay at the same height and drag them in like this to the bottom of the screw. You can see here that I might have needed to choose a different sort of fall off mode. Maybe I could have, I'm gonna undo that and just hold B and maybe say, right, I need less fall off and try that again. If you can't see the green plane, just angle your camera up slightly more until you can see it. No, I do need that one. And drag that down to about there. For the last bit at the bottom, I'm clicking that face one more time to move my pivot back there. Drag B, drag and hold B all the way down to there. And I can now do W on the keyboard and move this so it's kind of going into the geometry like that. And I'm going to rotate it as well, just hide it from the outside world like this. And now that's hidden, I can come out of here and see how this looks. And that's looking quite good. Now I do need to, uh, we can hit three on the keyboard now to preview how this looks if we were to subdivide it later on. So you have hit three on there. And in fact, you can just select your entire geometry, all of your objects and hit three. And you can see how nice it looks, except for the pipe in the middle. You can see that it's actually got, it almost looks like a blimp at the top here. It's all getting pinched in. So to stop that from happening, I'm gonna hit one on the keyboard. In fact, I'm going to hit one for everything to come out of smooth preview mode. And I'm going to go to isolate select, which is this button just up here. It's a white cursor on a dotted line. Click on that. And you can see the, there is some, there's still some faces here at the top, which is causing this weird effect because of these triangles. So if you go to face mode and hit B to turn off soft select, and you could click on the one by one, but you'd be here all day. So if you hold tab just above caps lock, you've got tab, you can paint select very carefully all of these triangles a lot faster, then hit delete so that they're gone. Now, when you hit three on the keyboard in object mode, you can see that it's a bit better. There's a still a bit of a problem though, if I come out of isolate select here, by clicking on it again. When I hit three on everything, the screw starts to taper off too far because there's only one edge here that's sort of getting averaged out. So the trick to this is to go to edge mode and double click on the edge and bevel. And once you bevel that edge, you would definitely need to decrease the fraction of the bevel down. You can use your control button on the keyboard. If you hold control while dragging the slider, it's more accurate and you can dra drag the bevel down to about there. When you hit three now, the screw will only taper down beneath that point, and so it's all looking a lot better. If you need to edit this uh, screw anymore, go back to one mode, and for example, if you wanted to taper the underside in here, you can go to face mode, select the lower bevel by double-clicking on it like that, hitting resize, and you can taper it in, and you can add ed edge loops where needed. Um, for what I need though, I'm gonna leave the screw with flat sides like this. If you do want to increase the sharpness of the edge, you can add simply add more edge loops. So I could go to edge mode, and if I was to add an edge loop in between the bevel at the top, when I hit three, the edge will suddenly be a lot sharper. Same for inside here. If you hit two on the keyboard, two shows you a wireframe of your one mode while showing the three mode underneath. So I can go to my edge loop here, very carefully uh, drag one in, and as soon as I let go, you see the geometry tighten up um, and you can add edge loops on the top like this, on the sides like that, and it sort of tightens everything up. Be very careful then not to add edge loops in the corners up here, as this will start to add pinches to the corners of your geometry. So be really careful with that. If you did want to tighten up those edges, you would have to go to hit one on the keyboard, then go to mesh and smooth it properly like that. Um, as you can see how many more edges it's created now, but you have more control here and you can actually permanently uh, maybe line up some faces in your top view like this. It will take you a while, but you shouldn't really need to be this 
super accurate anyway for such a small object. And when you're done, you can combine the entire object by going to mesh, combine, and you're done.